It may take more than a kiss from the princess to turn a frog into a prince. But according to evolution story, amphibians such as frogs really did turn into mammals, including princess. Today, the theory of evolution is considered an established fact. But it wasn't always so. The book of Genesis is a brief glimpse into the mystery of origins, the revelation of a supreme creator to a fallen creation, a truth doubted by few until only a century and a half ago when an amateur naturalist set out on a voyage of discovery and shook the world with a heretical idea. Exploring the scorching lava beds of the Galapagos Islands, Charles Darwin was fascinated by the strange wildlife. He saw that giant tortoises isolated on different islands were different sizes and shapes. And he imagined that given enough time, if the tortoises kept on changing, they might eventually be transformed into something entirely different. At Oxford University, Dr. Richard Dawkins is professor of public understanding of science. The author of several best-selling books, he is also one of Darwin's foremost defenders. I suppose the great mystery of life is to explain where the complexity of life came from. Another way of talking about complexity is to say information. Information is a kind of measure of complexity. And the complexity of life is not just plain complexity, it's also adapted, living things not only are complicated, but they do things, they survive. They do everything in their power to survive, and they look as though they are beautifully designed machines, machines designed to survive. But not all experts agree that the complexity of life could have come about by the accumulation of lots of lucky changes. And a growing number of dissenters are questioning Darwin's theory. Molecular biologist Dr. Michael Denton is a senior research fellow at the University of Otago in New Zealand. He claims Darwinism is a theory in crisis, which assumes the so-called fact of evolution, yet cannot explain the supposed transformation of simple life forms into complex creatures by random processes. I don't think the Darwinian theory of evolution is anything like the established fact that many biologists claim. I call it the great... Uh, cosmological or cosmogenic myth of the 20th century. And that's a view I still, uh, still maintain. I think nothing uh, I've seen in the biological sciences, no advances in science that I've seen in the last 20 years, um, in any way have changed my mind in any way about that fundamental, that fundamental belief of mine that uh, Darwinism is an inadequate explanation. Darwin's ideas are now conventional wisdom, and it's considered an established fact that simple life forms evolved over millions of years of gradual change into all the complexity and diversity of life that we know today without the design of a sovereign creator. And of course the puzzling thing is where does all this complexity come from? Where does all this information come from? It cannot come about by chance. It's absolutely inconceivable that you could get something as complicated as a bird and, and as well designed as a bird or a human or a hedgehog coming about by chance. That's absolutely out. Because to get from nothing, from no complexity, no information, to I the extreme complexity of a modern living thing in one step of chance couldn't possibly happen. That would be like throwing a dice a thousand times and getting a, a six every single time. It's out of the question. But if you allow a little bit of luck in any one generation, and then a little bit of luck in the next generation, a little bit of luck in the next generation, by cumulatively adding this luck step by step by step by step, you can work from any degree of simplicity to any degree of complexity. All you need is enough time. So where does it come from? It's come from the gradual, incremental process of evolution by natural selection. It's taken for granted in the modern world of science that ancestral fish appeared in a primeval ocean, then crawled out of the water 
and became amphibians. Amphibians changed into reptiles and reptiles into mammals. Evolutionists claim that other reptiles shed their scales, grew feathers, and took to the skies to become birds. But reptiles and birds are very different. Reptiles have no genetic information for wings or feathers. To change a reptile into a bird would require the addition of huge amounts of complex information. Darwin reasoned that, with a bit of luck, the accumulation of enough small changes could even turn reptiles into birds. Michael Benton says it cannot be done. One can quote lots of examples in the biological realm of things which seem, as it were, beyond the reach of that simple Darwinian mechanism. There's the things like the avian lung, there's the feather, there's the amniotic egg, bacterial flagellum. I mean, really a vast number of systems which have that unique watch-like sort of complexity that you find in nature, where in fact, to have the system functioning, you need A, B, C, D, so forth, all in place, interlocking like together, before the thing will function. And it's very difficult to see how those sorts of things were, were arrived at undirected, by undirected processes. I mean, you could take the feather, for example. The flight feather is a very complicated structure of tiny interlocking hooks and barbules which hold the, um, the, the parts of the feather together. And uh, it's, it's these tiny little micro-adaptations within the feather which give it its, um, it, which adapt the feather for flight. And uh, the Darwinian model of evolution requires that the intermediates are fully functional. And I can't imagine how you can get to such ends uh, th without having to sort of go through structures which are really not, not functional uh, in some sense, in some biological sense. Reptiles and birds also have totally different reproductive and respiratory systems. In reptilian lungs, air passes in and out of only one tube, which ends in tiny air sacs. But in birds, the air flows continually through the lungs in one direction, through a complex system of interconnected air sacs, connected up with its hollow bones. Darwinists claim that reptilian lungs changed into birds' lungs through a lot of intermediate stages. But Michael Denton says half-formed lungs won't work because of the transitional form cannot breathe. Any intermediate stage would result in extinction of the species. Well, the avian lung is an example, um, like the living cell or like the feather, of a, a highly complicated system, very, very involved, very complicated, which, as far as I can see, you can only conceive of it functioning as a, for um, a respiratory gas exchange. Um, if the whole current structure and order of it is in place. One of the toughest examples in nature of a highly complex system composed of a whole lot of interacting components, all of which must be there as they are in every single bird's lung before the thing would function. In the case of the avian lung, this is, for me, 